Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, everybody, and welcome, uh, everybody attending today. So my name is Stephen. I will be going through an overview of the benefits of McCormick Pro. Let me go ahead and bring up my information here. Um, so if you guys want to email me directly, here's my email. And we have the company phone number here as well. Feel free to send me an email if you'd like to schedule a more in-depth, you know, one-on-one -on -one demonstration, or if you guys had any questions. But I will save some time at the end uh, where you guys can type in some questions, and I can go ahead and answer those. All righty. So when you sign in with a username and password, this is where we'll arrive. So this is what we call the job screen, uh, basically a digital filing cabinet where you'll keep all your past jobs and current jobs you'll be working on. You could see we have them as bid status, the ones in process, the ones we've won, the ones we've lost. You can always click here and sort those if needed. No limitations here as well. So you can have, you know, thousands of jobs in this history. I can always go to the top and, you know, search by job name, or maybe I want to search by estimator to find that job very quickly. Um, also, this is customizable too. So I can create, you know, these different tabs up at the top, whether I want to, you know, uh, sort uh, by commercial jobs, industrial, residential, but you can even go to setup and you can create more tabs if needed and name them whatever you want and same with your job details these columns too you can bring over what you want to see in your job screen so I'm actually going to utilize this job here 149 West Boston uh, for today's you know web demonstration um, you, you know really you're either doing one of two things on this screen uh, you're either creating a new job or you're going to be opening up an existing job uh, you may be opening an existing job to pull reports from it maybe coming in here to finalize it or you know you're going to be coming back in a couple months later maybe to do a change order so uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna uh, hit the details on this job. This would be the same screen if I hit new job, just without this information provided on the right. So at a minimum, name the job, and then you can add in this detailed information, email address, phone numbers, names, all that good stuff. This will actually populate into the proposal for you at the end. Now let's go over to DEP drawings. So this is where we bring in our plans for the job. First thing you can do is create some folders here, uh, just a way to stay organized. So you maybe you create one for uh, revised plans, let's say, just to keep all your revision plans separate from your originals. Now to actually bring in the drawings, what we're gonna do is hit add drawings. This will access the computer file explorer. From here, you know, bring in any imaging file from JPEG, TIFF, PDF, you know, Google Earth, any Google image is fine. Um, and you may have one file which has 150 plans in it, right? I understand sometimes that's the case. Uh, you can actually bring in multiple files at once if you'd like. So I can drag all my files in and hit open. What that does is bring us to this preview mode. So it's pretty cool because it'll separate all our plans out for us from each file. And then I can go through here to see, hey, which plans do I want to tie into this job? So I can go through here and I can import selected plans that I want, or I could just go ahead and import all. Now that I've imported all of my plans, I can make, you know, do some customization here if I'd like on that plan, color code it by status or make some notes to it. So that's gonna wrap up step number one. All we're doing is creating a job and bringing in our plans. So we take you through a five-step process here at McCormick. We like to keep it very simple for our users. So now we're on to our next step, what we call labels. In the label section, you're organizing where you're putting your takeoff. So whether you want to utilize two columns or all five columns, depending on how detailed you want to break down the job. 
In the first column, you could see our bid packages. So we have our base bid. You have an alternative price one. You may have alt two, alt three, alt four. You may have four alternative prices if you'd like, or maybe option one, option two, option three, depending on how you want to do this. Now, we could see you have some change orders in here as well. That's actually unique to McCormick, the ability to create a change order within the same job folder. So you don't have to have a change order program or you know create an entire new job. So I always love to mention the convenience of that. Next column, you could see areas. So we could either do it that way, or maybe it's by floors, or maybe it's a bigger job where this column is buildings or phases. And then in the next column, it's by floors and then by areas and then by systems. So it's depending on how detailed you wanna get. But really what we're doing is working granular from left to right, because each column is a subset of the previous. So now that we've created our labels, we can go ahead and close out of that. That's gonna lead us into our third step takeoff. This drop down here, this is what we call the active label set. So here's that first column we created with our bid packages, second column with our areas, and that third column with our systems. So right now I'm currently on base bid office A power. So if I were to do any takeoff right now, that's specifically where it's going. That's how that active label set works. Now over here, we have the database. So we have the items database and we have the assemblies database. Let's go ahead and just start with items. Now there are you know thousands and thousands of material in this database. So what we're gonna do to find material is utilize the menu. The menu is what drives the database. So it's very simple to use with just three or four clicks, you can find that material very easily. So let's just go ahead and do wire, we'll do copper, we'll do stranded, copper THH uh, and stranded wire. So here we are. Let's go ahead and select this 10 THHN copper stranded wire. Now this is highlighted in my database right now. So I could actually take this off if I wanted. I could type in 100, enter, and I've taken off 100 feet of that wire. So this is my audit trail. This is my receipt, everything tracking my work. So that is manual takeoff. So this is if like I didn't have digital plans or I just wanted to add some material to the job, you could just do it manually if you needed to. Now reviewing this material, this is what we're providing. We have four levels of pricing and we have six levels of labor. So we won't go into too much depth on that, but that is what we're providing to you. Now moving on to assemblies, you can actually see it's changed my menu. So now, uh, you know, an assembly is a makeup of items. So let's go ahead and take a look at some receptacles. We'll go devices, standard grade, receptacles. Now here we go, here's my list of receptacles. I'll go ahead and just select this duplex standard and I'll go ahead and hit buy products on that. Just so you guys can see how detailed our assemblies are. This is all pre-built and this will be provided to you with the purchase of the system. You can see very detailed mud ring, ground screw, box support, plate, box, the receptacle, all of that's provided to you. With McCormick, it's very customizable as well. If I ever need to add material to the database, I can. If I need to adjust these assemblies, you can very easily on McCormick, whether I wanna change the name of this assembly or I wanna add material to the assembly. You just turn on add mode, it brings another instance of the database with a transfer bar. Now I could just transfer material into this assembly, whether I'm adding to it or I'm swapping out different sizes or maybe I want a steel plate instead of a plastic plastic one. You could do that very easily. Or I want to delete material out. So totally up to you what you decide. But in McCormick, it's very simple to make adjustments to the database. Now moving on, let's go ahead and jump into Design Estimating Pro. This is our built-in digital takeoff system. First thing we're going to do is select our plan. So here are those folders that we created in that first step. And I'll go ahead and open up this power plan here. Next thing we wanna do is set a scale. So we can see here on this plan, the scale is 1 8 equals a foot. Let's go ahead and take a look up at the top here. You have three different options. You can hand enter a custom scale. You can set one from a known point, or if you know that scale, you can go ahead and enter it. We also have engineering scales in there as well. So I'll go ahead and set my scale. Now I'm ready to do takeoff digitally. So I'm just gonna start with basic counting and basic measuring. 
going into the database here, I'll go ahead and select this duple duplex 20 amp. So this is highlighted in my database. That's going to be shown as my active part in Design Estimating Pro. We could see that on the bottom left corner here. And you could also see in the bottom right corner what your active label set is. Where is this going? It's going into my base bid for Office A hour. Now going through here, all I'm doing is left clicking. And with each click, it's accounting for everything in the assembly, price of the material, and the labor hours to install. So very complete. And we could see in the bottom corner here, I've taken off 21 of those receptacles. So if we go take a peek right now at my audit trail, there it is. It's automatically being estimated as I mark my plan. That's what makes us a true all-in-one system. And now there's a P, which stands for pro, and there's the drawing that it's on. The M was for manual entry. All right, now I want to go ahead and do some linear takeoff. Let's go branch, do EMT. I'll do steel set screw to a strap. Here's my different installations, strap concrete, rack, a beam clamp. What am I connecting to? I'll go ahead and grab the number 12, and here's all my number 12 branch assemblies. I'll select this three number 12 half inch EMT. Now hitting buy products on that will show you everything included. So as I take it off digitally, we're gonna include connectors, you know, couplings every 10 feet, the EMT, wire, all of that's provided to us. So now going back into Design Estimating Pro, that is shown as my active part, and I'm ready to do my takeoff. So click to start the run, click to change directions, and then a double click to end. So very simple to use. Now you can customize all of this as well. So hitting the space bar, it brings me over to select. It's just a toggle, a quick shortcut. Now that I'm on select, I can select one of these receptacles. You know, I can change the symbol if I want to. This is very helpful if this is a blank plan. So we do provide you with the design build aspect to the program. And you can do some customization here as well, whether I wanna add a text overlay over the top. Now I can see that looks like a duplex. On the branch as well, I can select it. I can change the shape style, the color, do a text overlay over the branch if I want to. Same thing, all of this is customizable. Now, if I want to account for vertical values, I can just right click on that branch. I can add a drop value to the start of the run, at the end of the run, at the start and the end, or exactly where I click. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a drop value to the end of this run. It's going to provide me with a default vertical drop value of eight feet. You can always change that in the settings on your system or I could just type into this box. Let's say 10 feet. Now I have a vertical drop value of 10 feet from the ceiling to the panel. And that would be to you know manually enter that in. I also have a feature up at the top here where I can turn on auto start, auto end. This is what we call our auto drop feature. I can always override that eight foot value as well. Whether I want, let's say six feet in the beginning of my run and 10 feet at the end. So now that I've turned that on, when I go and do my run, I'll just do a random run right here just so I can show you guys. It'll automatically account for those vertical values at the beginning and the end. But you can always click at any point on that branch and add a vertical value. Now, we have some amazing features in this program as well with auto count, we have auto home runs, you can compare drawings, you know, this is fully loaded. And one thing I wanna show you is auto home run. This is uh, a patented feature. Uh, so you won't see this anywhere else. And we actually have won the Nika Showstopper Award for this feature specifically. So what you want to do is create an endpoint. We'll just create one right here. And I can name this as well because I can have multiple endpoints if I want. I'll name this one panel A. And now what I want to do is let's account for uh, a unistrut rack. I'm going to go ahead and create a routing path. 
So count for obstacles. I'll go through this hallway and bring it over here to the panel. I can name this as well, especially I can have multiple routing paths. So I'll name this path one. And now uh, for an example for this feature, I'll just go ahead and run these junction boxes to panel A. So what I'll do is select the branch needed, and that's gonna give me a few options here with the pencil with the plus sign. Whether I wanna go direct, they say as a crow flies, or orthogonal, squared off. Let's go ahead and do squared off, most commonly used, and then no path or that routing path I created to panel A. So now that I've set that up, all I need to do is left click. It's going to take the shortest path to the routing path to the panel for me. And you can see I still have my drop, auto drop and auto end on. We can turn those off. All I'm doing is left clicking here and it's gonna take that shortest path to the panel and do the automatic home run for me. Great feature, everyone loves this. And I can always hit this inspect and itemize tool and click on that. It's telling me I have four runs going through here at a total of 236 feet. If I hit the drop down, it'll show me my individual runs and the amount of feet per run. So that could be very useful. You can also filter what you want to show on this plan as well. Whether I want to, you know, maybe hide my endpoint or my routing path. Or maybe I just want to show my branch run so I can send this out to my guy out in the field. I could print this out. If I print it out, it'll look exactly like it is here on my plan. So that filtering tool is very useful. You know, it doesn't take it out of your estimate, whatever you filter. It's just what you can visually see on your plan. So this is fully loaded, um, a lot of bells and whistles in here, and we can always go into more depth. You shoot me an email and we could do one-on-one -on -one demonstration. But essentially, now that you've done all your takeoff digitally, we can close out a Design Estimating Pro. We could see everything in my audit trail that I've marked digitally on my plan. We could see adjusted quantities as well. So those are my drop values that I added. That's why it's highlighted yellow, showing me I've made an adjustment can always summarize this down too and collapse everything down so I can see my totals. Now we're ready for our fourth step. This is our extension report. First thing we wanna look at here is our total. So up at the top right, we can see our total material cost for this job and the total labor hours to install. Now looking at this report, here is our items. So this is all the material laid out for us, down to the wire, nuts, screws, washers, right? And now we have the quantities of that material in this column. And as a set default report on my system, I have price one, most competitive pricing, along with bid labor, our standard issued McCormick labor. This dropdown will give you the options of what price and what labor I'm gonna go with for this job. I can even grab a full material list here. Or if I wanted to, a full assembly list. Now there's many ways to look at this report as well. You know, I can filter it by quoted material. So now I can go ahead and send this out to my supplier to get pricing. I can also expand and collapse by cost code. We have cost codes built in on the system. So I'm seeing my branch rough, total material cost, the total labor hours to install, and then everything included in my branch rough. That is another way to look at this report. We can go further than that. Going into my labels tab here, I could separate it out by area, I could separate it out by system, or I could even drill further down if I wanted to. Maybe I just want to see a report for, let's say, Office A power. So this is where those labels become very important because yes, it is a basic step. You're organizing where you're putting your takeoff. However, you can get very detailed on your reporting on your extension report. Whether I, like I said, want to see Office A power. Now I just have a report for Office A power. So that could be very useful. 
checking all all will check all my boxes that brings me back to my full report i can always make adjustments on this report as well if i wanted to adjust pricing if i wanted to possibly add additional time on labor last minute you can make those changes and it'll highlight bold showing you've made that edit you can also now move this into our bid summary so up at the top here we're going to go ahead and send this to summary just telling me it's locking it to protect my work now we can close out of the extension report that's going to lead us into our fifth and final step the bid summary now let me just wrap everything together here first step jobs create a job bring in your plans second step create your labels organize where you're putting your takeoff third step takeoff we see the database we went into design estimating pro did all our takeoff digitally then what we just left our extension report the full material list all the pricing all the labor for that job now we've pushed that information into our bid summary so here we are this is our top sheet we can see we're working our base bid total material cost our hours we can always make adjustments too if needed we can mark up 10 percent on this to add 110 percent we can always adjust the hours as well but what we're looking at here is our material and just below that we have labor and there's a check mark there what that's indicating is that we need to apply our rates to the hours for this job so working through the tabs down here at the bottom the next one over is labor this is where we apply our rates so we have a total of 755 hours for this job so one way we can do this is build out a crew let's say i have a foreman on the job i have a sub foreman i have a journeyman and I have an apprentice. So I've built out my crew. Now this is where you apply your rates. Once you've applied your rates, we now apply them to the hours. So we can put in the hour amount or you can do it by percentage. I'll go ahead and say, hey, 50% of my hours is going to my foreman. I'll say 25% to my sub foreman, 15% to my journeyman, and the remaining 10% of the hours to the apprentice. So now what I've done is I've applied 100% of these hours to these rates. Yeah, you can customize this. I can do this many different ways, whether I add a line, maybe I do it by a flat rate. And I do 100% of my hours at $80 an hour, let's say. Or, you know, I do it by name. Or let's say I have a helper on the job. My point is you can customize this how you want. In fact, you could even set up different labor groups for different workers and different rates. You can also set up your burden, you get as detailed as FICA, health insurance, and all that stuff for the workers. Now we'll move on to our next tab, quotes. This is where we enter in our lump sum of quoted material. So let's just say, for example, here, I had 5,000 in fixtures for this job. I could just go ahead and enter that in and account for that. I can always add in the supplier as well, and I can attach a cost code to it. At any point on these tabs, you can add lines and customize this how you want. Plus it can be saved into the job template and you can always paste over from that. So you don't have to fill out this information every time. You can actually paste over from previous jobs you've done as well. Next tab over is subcontract, anything we're subbing out for this job. Let's just say, for example, a core drill at $1,200. Now that's accounted for. Next tab over is DJE, which stands for direct job expense. You know, permits and fees, fuel, cleanup, parking, any of that stuff, we can account for that here. And let's just say, for example, 800 in permits and fees. Next one over is equipment rental. So this would be good for if you're, you know, renting equipment for the job, or maybe you own the equipment and you just want to account for cost. You can do that here as well. And I'll just say, for example, uh, $140 for a trailer for the week, and I need it for three weeks. We do provide a multiplier in there for you. That'll give us a total of $420 for that trailer. Next tab over is our bond table we provide you with. So if you do need to bond your job, we have the ranges 
and the percentages here. Our last tab is the tax tab. So wherever you're doing this job, you want to enter in your local tax rate right here. Now, at this point, we've gone through all of our tabs. We've added any additional expenses. We can now go back into our top sheet. But before I do that, I want to mention all of this is customizable in McCormick. Whether I want to add more tabs here, maybe one for indirect job expense, maybe supervision, you know, any of that. So you can add as many tabs as you want down here and customize this. Going back to our top sheet, we can see everything accounted for. Now I have a dollar amount attached to my labor, those quotes, core drill, fees, and that trailer we go we went ahead and rented. So now at this point, we need to add our markups. We need to add overhead and profit to the job. So I can go ahead and add in this column here individually, or I can go into this cell right here and add it to the total of the job. So I can do it by percentage or I can do a dollar amount. Let's just say, for example, 18% overhead for this job and 20% profit. Now you could see it's added and filled in those columns for me, but I can make adjustments if needed. Maybe I don't want overhead on my labor, or maybe I want to account for additional profit on my quota material, but I want less profit on my labor. You can make those adjustments if needed. And then on the right, you could see our raw cost, tax, raw cost with tax, overhead, our profit, our total return dollars, total return percentage, and now we have the sell price for this job. So at this point, we've gone through the five-step process and we now have our total sell price. We can go ahead and open up the proposal sheet and send it out. And I will show you the proposal. This will be provided to you. Uh, we, we, we give you a template as well. And you can have multiple templates if you'd like. If, you, if there's one that you prefer that you have already custom set up, you can bring that in. I could bring a full material list with quantities as well. I'll just go ahead and do the bid proposal. And now on the left here, you decide what from this job you wanna bring over into the proposal. I'll just do the base bid and my top sheet, and I'll go ahead and hit merge on that. If I had any additionals or alternatives, I can always bring those in. I'm just gonna do the base bid. Now it automatically populates all that job information for me. So now we can see you know, the addresses, email, all that good stuff is already pre-populated because we filled that out in our first step on the details. Information on the job along with the total sell price. Here if we had any additionals, but we don't. So what we can do is just go ahead and take them out. If I need to type up any inclusions or anything, I could just type into here. And then we have signatures below. You can also change the watermark if you'd like to with your company and your logo. All of this is very customizable. So at this point, we just completed a job with McCormick Pro. A couple things I want to mention with Pro, we do provide you with change order tracking. So here are my change orders. And I can go ahead and select one of these change orders here, and I can pull reports. We have the template here. I'll select this change order one that I selected and select new. And now I can get a full itemized report off my change order tracking. So you can select any of these boxes on the right here to what you visually want to see on this change order report. This can be very helpful if you're doing quite a, a bit of change orders. Here we are, where where our dashboards. Let's take a look. You can pull a lot of information utilizing McCormick Pro. We will keep track of, you know, all the lead estimators in the system, all jobs in the system, our division breakdowns, the whole company. You have all of these options here. I could see all my jobs in the system, the total and material cost, the total job cost, labor hours, all of that information. And you can even look into it per job as well.
many different ways we could look at this reporting. You see everything for the whole company. I can click into that job and I can see the details for that job. Now, those are some of the amazing benefits of McCormick Pro. I'm gonna go ahead now and leave the rest of the time for questions. So if you guys want to ask me any questions, you can go ahead and type into that questions box. And you guys can also shoot me an email, you know, personally, if you wanted to go over anything specific. So we have some few different options. The question was, what training does McCormick offer? A few different options. Whether we send our trainer out to your company on site, or you can come to McCormick class here. It's a three-day class we hold here in Chandler, Arizona for eight hours a day. Or you can do it all via Zoom, online training, which would be sharing your system, via Zoom with the trainer and him taking you through the system, getting you comfortable how to utilize the system. Also, it's getting set up, whether you wanna build a favorites list, a, jo you know, a job template, proposal template, um, you know, build out specific assemblies in the system. You can utilize that time how you want and you have six months to utilize that time. If you do decide to do on-site training or you come to the McCormick College, we will still provide you with online training for that specifically and if you are interested in that further we can go over the pricing options for that training too just send me an email I'll go ahead and put that back up on the screen if you guys need that information I haven't seen any other questions come in yet, but I do want to mention, you know, we are going to cover, you know, your, your support. So we're going to give you unlimited phone support along with the system. Um, you know, any new versions that come out, we do have version 16 coming here in the next couple months. Um, and we're going to go ahead, and notify you and then update you automatically on that system. So you guys don't have to worry about any of that. And being cloud, um, we also, you know, we take care of the whole IT side behind the scenes. You know, that's fully backed up and secured along with unlimited data. So no data limitations as well. And all you need on your end is a strong internet connection and you can access McCormick and all of your data from any device.
So another question was, what formats can you download to import into accounting software? So our parent company, Foundation Software, we are going to have full integration with that accounting program with version 16. As of now, uh, if it's any other accounting software, you do need to import it into Excel and then Excel into that accounting software. So we can import, export with Excel on the McCormick system. Also in our system, we're always taking in user suggestions. Uh, so we're always continuously making this system better. Another amazing thing that we added to the system not too long ago was back into our takeoff going into Design Estimating Pro. I just want to mention this favorites list here. So this is something you guys could get set up with, uh, whether if it's with the training or if you guys are confident enough to do that. Uh, but take the time and add all the material you typically use for jobs inside of this favorites list. So, you know, if you, you can have multiple favorites lists too. So maybe you have one for residential, maybe one for commercial or one for industrial, and you put all the material you typically use for jobs inside of here. So now at this point, I don't even need to touch the database. I can just grab the material and take it off. So really nice shortcut. I highly suggest setting up that favorites list. It makes things really efficient, especially I'm sure you use a lot of the same materials. I'm going to give everybody just a few more minutes here to ask any additional questions. Uh, otherwise, like I said, feel free to email me or you can call the office, office and ask for Stephen. I was asked, can I show an example of an overlay? Absolutely. So in a design estimating pro here, select the plan. I can go ahead and actually select this lighting plan because I have a revised plan for it. So this will be actually a good example. Bring up your plan, set your scale, and then you can go to compare drawings and decide what plan you wanna overlap. So you can overlap multiple plans if you wanted as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in that lighting revised plan. And now I have an overlap of drawings. So what you wanna do is line up those drawings and you can even change the coloration to, to see it better visually, whether let's make that primary drawing red or any color that I want. And I can also remove the background for better contrast. 
now I can clearly see my revisions. So instead of comparing side by side and figuring out what's being changed, I can overlap plans. And I can actually do takeoff right here on top of this. Whether, let's say for example, I'm adding a few receptacles. Now I've added three receptacles to this estimate. Or maybe I'm taking out three receptacles. I can switch this to a negative and then take three out of my estimate. Everyone loves this feature. It definitely speeds things up and makes it very easy for change orders, any revisions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end today's webinar. Uh, like I said, feel free to shoot me an email if you guys think of any questions later on or if you guys want to schedule a web demonstration with me. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Have a great rest of your day.